1920, Spain was a constitutional monarchy under Alfonso VIII, but it was inefficient and corrupt. Ever since Spain lost her many colonies, like Cuba and the Philippines in 1898, the Spanish economy crumbled. Workers were either unemployed or worked under poor conditions for poor wages. There was over 2.5 million landless brazos. These brazos were almost all close to starvation. The political government was always in a heat or a standstill, as there were so many different parties, all with their own views. Mainly there were supporters of communism, who wanted the Soviet way of life, socialist, who wanted a stronger control of the Spanish economy, or anarchist, who wanted to abolish monarchy altogether. At this time, Spain was a political mess. Only three years earlier, in 1917, there was a general strike, much like that in Winnipeg of Canada. Only this one was crushed by the army. And over the next six years, Spain saw 12 different governments walk in and out of the parliament buildings. In 1921, the army was sent to the Spanish colony in Morocco to quell a rebellion. It was a massacre. In 1923, it was agreed by Alfonso that General Primo de Rivera would take control as a military dictator of Spain. He introduced many public work projects. He irrigated land, built roads and highways, and enhanced the power grid. And during his time, industrial production tripled in Spain. Eventually though, the depression hit, and it hit hard. Unemployment rose, and Rivera couldn't sort out the financial problem. He lost support of the military and was forced to resign. In April 1931, elections were held and the Republicans were victorious, though the parliament was mixed up with many different groups. After this, Alfonso VIII abdicated his throne and the monarchy became a republic. With such a mixed government, no one could agree on anything and little could ever get done. The different political parties had their own way of doing things and always just ended up in an argument. The financial issue had caused peasants and the civil guard to repeatedly clash with each other and often ended up in a building or a church being burnt down. In July 1936, everything changed when General Francisco Franco received help from the British who hated the communist. They took him out of the Canary Islands where he had been banished to and brought him over to Morocco where he regrouped with his loyal military and invaded his own country of Spain. Spain became the wild, wild west, and officers all over the place began taking over small towns and villages throughout Spain, claiming them as their own. Finally, the Republican government decided to declare war on the rebelling armies, and the Spanish Civil War had begun. At first, the great powers of the world had decided not to take action by signing a non-intervention agreement. But then, the fascist leaders Mussolini and Hitler broke their word and began sending military aid to Franco and his fascist army. This made the Soviets feel justified to send in their own military aid to the Republicans. The other powers did not take sides, yet they traded with both sides. And although Canada and the United States didn't declare war, they did send international volunteer brigades. People who felt this war needed to end fascist free volunteered and fought for the Republicans, whether they were trained soldiers or not. No one committed like the fascists and the communists did though. Germany, Italy, and the Soviet Union used the Spanish Civil War as a way to test out their own new weapons in live combat. Germany's new air force, or Luftwaffe, was sent in with 10,000 German soldiers, declared as borrowed by Franco. They proved to be deadly and devastating. The Italians sent 60,000 men into fight with the nationalists as well. The Russians, however, came to a sad realization that their T-34 tanks had many weaknesses, like only having one radio per squad, and their aircraft were ill-equipped. The Russians quickly withdrew their aid, and the fascists marched in like a steamroller. The Republicans were people who supported a revolutionary anarchy and communism. Supporters were basically primarily secular and urban, landless peasants, being strong in industrial regions. This faction was called the Loyalists by supporters, but the Reds by enemies. The Nationalists were people who supported anti-communism. 
Their leaders had a generally wealthier, more conservative, monarchist landowning background, and they favored the centralization of state power. One of the nationalist views was to defend the church, which had been a target of attacks by many Republicans. The anarchist way was strong in the Republican army, and that led to poor organization and confused loyalties of who was leading and when. The nationalist, on the other hand, knew their leader was Franco. He was a strong and strict leader with the discipline and knowledge of being a military general. His army was all soldiers who fought hard to reform the country into a proud Spanish fascist state. This gave the nationalist a sharp edge on the Republicans, and by the end of 1937, Franco controlled most of Spain. However, he did not hold Bilbao or Barcelona, which were the most industrialized areas of Spain. Neither did he control the capital Madrid and its surrounding area. He did, however, have these three territories isolated from each other, and they were unable to support one another. By the end of 1938, Franco had conquered Bilbao, and then just two months later, Barcelona fell as well. Only one more month after that, the capital Madrid and the rest of Spain surrendered to their fascist future. The bombing in Guernica set a terrible precedent. It displayed that military targets can be civilians. Over 400 civilians died in this raid, and since then, civilians have been a constant target of bombers. Over 500,000 people died in this war. This was the first great military step for fascism as it marked its place in the world. Armies overthrew their governments, the first of millions of civilians were bombed. The alliance of the fascist nations became clear and the Germans demonstrated their pure military might whilst the Soviets demonstrated their flaws. The German war machine was now moving and the Second World War was now just on the horizon. And of course, just as Mr. Campbell says, had the fascists not won in Spain, then Germany would have won the Second World War. And Mr. Campbell knows everything.